This is 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. All praise goes to Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha Raka Kwedash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone, the men who taught me this truth. Also, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11 again. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. And how would the spiritual being Satan get an advantage of us through his physical counterpart? Starting with the wicked elites of the so-called modern day white race. All right. Which would be the Edomites, the children of Esau. Job 9 and 24. The earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. All right. So the wicked, which is the devil that the Bible speaks of, which comes in the form of the wicked elite, which comes after the working of Satan, they would attempt to take an advantage of us after the workings of Satan. It says, for we are not ignorant, but the Most High have shed the spirit of our Lord and Savior upon us, which is the spirit of understanding. It says, but we are not ignorant. The opposite of being ignorant is to know. So through the light, we're in the know. It says, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And we know Esau has several devices. We know one of the main devices that he want to put forth, all right, to cement his agenda. But due to the light, he's not going to be able to deceive everybody. The scripture speaks about him not being able to deceive the elect. All right. Because mainly that's who Esau Edom wants to take down. All right. The nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. OK. But him being a, a, a subtle individual, as the scripture says, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord power had made, roughly paraphrasing. That's the same spirit that's in the wicked elites. All right. The same spirit that was in the serpent. If you can receive it, that same spirit was in Cain. And when Cain died, he came back in the reincarnation as Esau. All right. Putting forth that same spirit. All right. What the scripture says about Esau, he was a what? He was a cunning hunter. All right. So his children, which are the Edomites, starting with the wicked elites here in our time. Okay. They're what? Cunning. All right. They're subtile in wickedness. And they have been conditioning the people with comfort for a long time here in America just to take it away. I have a quick article, Relocate USA, all right? It says, the American convenience culture, all right? So America has a culture of convenience. It says the United States is sometimes referred to as having a culture of convenience. In other words, Americans are used to living a convenient lifestyle where most necessities and luxuries are easily available at all times. All right. And that's the life here in America. It says from the 24 hour fast food restaurants to the giant superstores providing everything from toilet paper to a 70 inch flat screen TV. America is a country of now. All right. You can go to what they call a one stop shop, such as Wally World, and you can get everything that you need there. Compared to run around to this place, to that place. No, you can all get it in one place. That's a form of convenience. Being able to eat when you get ready and not have to cook it, not have to go catch your meal and kill your meal and skin your meal and prepare your meal. OK. That's convenience at its finest. It says from the 24 hour fast food restaurants to the giant superstores providing everything from toilet paper to a 70 inch flat screen TV. America is a country of now. It says. For some expats, the fast pace always own culture 
can be overwhelming at first, but overall, most find the change to be positive in the end. Right. America is a country of now. Let's you know that the wicked elites, all right, their bloodline stem from Esau because that's the same spirit that was in Esau. He had a now spirit. All right. He had a spirit that wanted things instantly. For an example, uh, Genesis, the 25th chapter. All right. When it's pertaining Esau and our forefather, Jacob. Jacob was what? Cooking the pottage and Esau couldn't wait. He needed it right then. That's the same spirit that's on these Edomites. All right. They have a now spirit. It says for some expats, an expat is a person that's not from the particular country that they're living in. The fast paced, always on the culture can be overwhelming at first. So when people first come to America, the fast paced own culture can be overwhelming because people have somewhat of a patient mindset that's not from America. They have somewhat of a tension span. All right. But when they get here, they lose that, all right? Because it's a microwave generation. It's a, a, a microwave country, okay? So it could be overwhelming at first, things moving so fast. It says, but overall, most find the change to be positive in the end. Yeah, because you can tickle your fancy here, all right? You can, you can be who you want to be. All right, how long you want to be it? You're 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 a free spirit, so to speak, to do wickedness. All right, and everything caters to you, to your needs. You can get everything at the touch of your fingers. It says below are a few examples of the American convenience culture. Twenty four seven stores. It says many groceries, drug stores. And other markets are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Certain fast food restaurants, including McDonald's, can be counted among the many conveniences available at all hours of the day. Whether you are looking to satisfy a craving at 2 a.m. or picking up some household essentials at 4 a.m., chances are you will find a place open to do so. Convenience at its finest. Don't have to wait any time of morning. You can just wake up out of your sleep and go buy things for your house. Go get something to eat. All right. That's convenience. It says pre-orders. Too busy to shop. Many businesses in America allow you to pre-order your items online. So when you show up at the stores, they are waiting and ready to go. You can pre-order from grocery stores, department stores, and many fast food restaurants. All right. It's one thing to uh, be able to get fast food. All right. But you can pre-order at a fast food restaurant. Not just come up, order your food. Minutes later, it's ready. But at a fast food restaurant, it can be ready when you get there convenience at its finest drive through it says in america you can order your food from the convenience of your own vehicle when you go through the drive through order your food pay and pick it up all without even stepping foot on the ground convenience at its finest okay and it goes to speak about refills Let's read it. It says, not only do restaurants in the U.S. have to offer you free water, but most will refill your fountain drinks for free. Drink up. The waiter will be by soon to top off that drink. It says, this convenience does not apply to alcohol beverages. So America is that convenience country. And America has been putting forth this convenience for decades to condition the people to be used to it. All right. Just so when they snatch it away, they can present you with that thing thing. And if you take this thing thing, you will get your normal convenience back. Your normal convenient lifestyle. 
that you used to live. You'll get it back. That's why Esau Edom is the devil that the Bible speaks of. That's why this man is a cunning hunter. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And verse, verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of the Most High, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. All right? The trickery that this man put forth to trap you up. We must what? Put on the whole armor of the Most High in order to protect ourselves from this cunning, uh, um, uh, subtle and wickedness race of people. All right, starting with the top tier elites, which is the wickedness of it all. All right, the, the shadow government of America. All right, those that stand in the shadows and, and put forth their light. All right, which is putting forth their darkness here in America. But due to the light shining in our lives and us being anointed with the eye salve, we can determine, all right, who is the Bible speaking of when it's concerning the wicked or the devil. Why? Because of his traits, all right? The things that he do, you shall know them by their fruit. So we know that this devil is the wicked that the Bible speaks of. He is this, this devil, all right? that's gonna put, put forth these wiles or put forth these tricks. So the scriptures instruct us to what? Put on the whole armor because it's a spiritual war, okay? And this man is constantly setting traps, all right? But by us having our path illuminated, we'll see the trap, okay? But before we get to it, Proverbs 22, in verse 3, it says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hide of himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. That's right. So the simplicity that's in our people, they don't recognize uh, what's going on, man. They they getting uh, fed to be sent to the slaughter. All right. They have this convenient Western mindset. All right. And not ready for nothing to, to jump off. All right, because when that power go out, how are you going to feed yourself? All right. Number one, how you're going to see. So how you're going to survive if you can't see and if you can't feed yourself due to you uh, being dependent on the things that this system have made you dependent upon, which this system itself. So a prudent man foresee of all of these things, all of these evils. All right. We're looking ahead and we see Jacob's trouble. We see power outages. We see the famine. We see the total destruction. And we're taking cover. We're hiding ourselves in this truth. It says, but the simple two thirds of our people, they pass on, they, ah, they fan the hand, they keep walking, all right? And, what, and what's the end of them? They are punished. And that's what's gonna happen, man. They're gonna take that chip because that lifestyle that they was used to to live in, which is convenience, is going to get taken away. And they're going to do whatever they need to do to get it back because they're not going to be able to survive. Okay? But we have made our refuge, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. All right? Therefore, we have protection in that time. Psalms 91. Verse 1. In verse 1, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So we're dwelling in this truth. So we're going to abide, we're going to tarry under the protection of the Most High, all right? And that's going to come by the way of Yahweh Shai and the angels, all right? And also what? Wisdom and knowledge. It says, I will say of the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power in him will I trust. So we have made Yahweh Wai, Yahweh Shai our refuge, all right, and our fortress. So we're going to trust in that. And that's what's going to deliver us. All right, from these uh, uh, snares and traps. The scripture says in verse three, it says, surely he shall deliver thee. All right. When deliverance comes up, Yahweh Shai is right there because he is deliverance. 
It says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. All right, from the trap, all right, of the fowler, which is Esau. A fowler is, is, uh, is someone that set traps for birds. So this fowler is, is, is speaking of Esau. And we are the birds that he's setting traps for. But due to us having the eye salve, our path being illuminated, and we understand because we're in the know, we recognize these things because we're being circumspect. And that's only through the spirit allowing us to see these things. And once we uh, take in that light, we reflect that light out in the form of teaching, all right, in the form of warning. It says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, all right, and from the noise and pestilence. And that's uh, both of the most high swords, Esau and his ultimate sword, which is the intercontinental ballistic missiles. If we make the most high, why Yahweh shot our refuges? This is the outcome. We're going to be delivered from these traps that Esau Edom is setting, being that fowler, setting traps for birds. We're going to fly away. We're not going to be trapped. All right. We're not going to be bound. We're not going to be made permanent Americans. We're going to fly away with our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. And that's why, you know, the Most High had already predained who he want. Because the ones that he didn't want, he was going to block them of that discernment. All right. Because our people can't discern that Esau Edom is their enemy. And they're clinging to a broken reed. Isaiah Chapter 30, it says, Woe to the rebellious children, two thirds, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, they take counsel, but not of me. They take counsel, but not of the Most High. All right? They're taking counsel of the wicked. It says, And that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, it says, That they might add sin to sin, two thirds of our people. All right? They're taking upon a wicked uniform. All right, full of dirty spots. Okay, because they have rebelled from the most, uh, 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 rebelled against the most high, why you have a shot from the beginning. So now they got to come back to fulfill their lot. But the scripture says, destruction unto them. See, woe to the rebellious children, self the Lord, you have a shot. you have a shot. That take counsel, all right, all of your advice, your knowledge, your understanding is worldly, and nothing spiritual about it. It says, but not of me. It says, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit. All right? You're covering with a dark spirit. The spirit that's on the left-hand side. It says that they may add sin to sin. You broke the law, statutes, and commandments in your past life. You sinned against the Most High in your past life. Now you come back to do it again. All right? It says, verse 2, that walk to go down into Egypt, all right, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt, all right, two-thirds of our people, all right? They trust in the modern-day Egypt, the spiritual Egypt, which is America, and the modern-day Pharaoh would be the wicked elites, okay? And it says, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, which is the protection of America, okay? It says, therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh, all right, the wicked elites, be your shame. And the trust in the shadow or the strength or the protection of Egypt, which is America, your confusion. See that? But the elect, all right, is going to shine in those times due to understanding, due to the Most High opening their eyes and giving them discernment to see the right path, to see uh, the trickery of this devil. And also first to know who the devil was to actually see what he's doing. And all of that is from the mercy of the Most High, allowing Yahweh Shai to sup with us. So Lord willing, I pray that this made sense and that this was edifying. America has a convenience culture but Esau Edom has put that wild out there or put that trick out there just to take it away in order to trick you into taking the mark of the beast, all right? But the elect 
will not be fooled. Lord willing, I pray that this made sense and that this was edifying. Shalom, DTA.